Do you believe that Mohammed split the moon in two? Do you believe that Mohammed flew to heaven on a winged horse, for example? I, I pay you the compliment of assuming that you, that you don't. No, I do. I believe in miracles. You believe that? Yes. You believe that Mohammed went to heaven on a winged horse? Yes, I believe in God. I believe in miracles. I believe in revelation. Unfortunately, there are a lot of really problematic beliefs that people have about philosophy, theology, and science that are very common in everyday conversations, in YouTube videos, and all types of discourse. And I want you to see an example of this. And to be fair, I will play the video itself so you can hear it directly from the source. This is from an interview between Mahdi Hassan, the journalist who has done tremendous work, and Richard Dawkins, a self-identified new atheist who is uh, commonly known for his attacks on religion, amongst other things. Things. But I want you to listen to this and see, can you point out where the mistakes are in terms of reasoning? And this is to demonstrate for the sake of progressing our conversations. Listen to this yourself and see what you think. Um, I mean, do you actually believe in your Muslim faith? Do you believe that Muhammad split the moon in two? Do you believe that Muhammad flew to heaven on a winged horse, for example? I, I pay you the compliment of assuming that you, that you don't. No, I do. I believe in miracles. You believe that? Yes. You believe that Muhammad went to heaven on a winged horse. I want you to pay attention to the way that Dawkins framed his question when he started off by saying, I pay you the compliment. So he's, he's implying that, you know, if you're a wise, intelligent person, as I assume you are, then you likely don't believe that such and such thing happened. You don't believe in miracles. You don't believe uh, in anything that uh, happened that uh, science today cannot explain. I pay you the compliment, meaning what, uh, if you... If you actually believe in those things, then it's a problem. And here's where there's a tangent and Dawkins demonstrates some bias against religion. He's attacking religion constantly, but uh, it was a really good interview actually about a different topic, which is, uh, is religion good or evil? And this topic came up and notice how he framed the question. Mockery is very common in this, uh, in, in this kind of discourse, in these kinds of uh, circles, unfortunately. Mockery with a condescending attitude. And do you see an equivalence between the idea of God and the idea of a fairy and a leprechaun. The evidence for both is equally poor. Do you actually believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ascended on a winged horse to heaven? This is the way that he's framing the question. Now notice, generally speaking, when someone says, ah, oh, that doesn't make any sense. This is nonsensical. Belief in God, that's nonsensical. Belief in miracles, nonsensical. Usually, this is a re really recent discourse, and it, uh, it's a very um, a modern uh, type of attack from a lot of anti-theists. Uh, there's a lot of contradiction with philosophy, philosophy of religion, philosophy of science. You can't claim that this is irrational. You cannot claim this is nonsensical. So Dawkins believes in a world that uh, came from nothing, and nothing here is defined in a very specific way beyond the scope of this particular video. But notice when he asks him about uh, belief in a winged horse, and obviously for those who are Muslim, you know that it's not a winged horse, it's a winged animal. Uh, and then he asks later, well, why couldn't it be something else? And I want you to pay attention to how Mahdi Hassan responds. I mean, Mahdi has done a tremendous job and he's, he's well known for his articulation, his debates. Uh, his focus on logic as well. But there were actually some uh, perhaps improvements that could be made in the response. And this is for the sake of learning. And obviously this is very uh, subjective. Notice if we fast forward to continue the conversation, what he says. Why not acknowledge, for example, the good things that religion has done? Do you accept that religion has done good things, despite all of our mad beliefs and our miracles? I accept that individual religious people have done an enormous number of good things. Not driven by religion? Well... I mean, who knows? Different I mean, mean spirited. You, take, you won't give any take, credit at all. Take somebody to the... like um, uh, Martin Luther King, for example. Reverend Martin Luther King. Yes. Um, <laughs> obviously, he was a he was a cleric. Um, so, so um, I, I imagine that that fed into the good things that he did. Plenty of other things did. He was a great admirer of Gandhi, uh, and um, he was a great admirer of nonviolence. He was a brilliant uh, and wonderful great man. Would you disconnect MLK's non-violence and Gandhi's non-violence from their very strongly held religious beliefs? They didn't. Well, um, I think that's, it's not a thing that I re really care about, actually. I mean, I, I, I think you they were- You do care about it, Richard. You're saying that people men. carry out violence in the name of God. And I cite you an example of very famous people who have done good and non-violence in the name of God, and you say, I'm not interested. If God doesn't exist, then doing something good in his name 
it's, gr it's great that something good gets done, but there's no evidence at all that believing in God makes you more likely to do good things. I can't see any noble logical connection between being religious and doing good things. So a, a couple of mistakes already, uh, f uh, kind of actually from both ends here. First, uh, Mahdi Hassan is trying to bring the conversation previously back to the main point about religion and people of religion that do good. And Richard Dawkins doesn't want to admit that people are driven by their religious beliefs to do good in this world. He says, yes, they've done it on an individual level, but not because of their religious teachings. Uh, he, he'll focus on the things that people take out of the context of religion and do the wrong things uh, to attack religion. But the good things, no, th these things don't, don't come from religious teachings. So he wants to remove religion from society and keep it as private within the home as possible and, and don't let it affect society. But that's actually not... The, the, the limit. In some cases a pernicious distraction from true education uh, which, I, which I love and value the way you value and love your God. Can you not do both? Well, so long as well, they don't contradict each other. There's always a divide, Richard. There's as long as they don't divide. contradict each other. But, but um, if, you, if, you, if you actually believe Mohammed flew to heaven on a winged horse, that's an anti-scientific belief. And that could be wrong. But, but that it doesn't, well is wrong. But I mean, that doesn't check. How do you know it's wrong? Oh, come on. You're a man of the 21st century. No, I'm you, just asking. It comes back to my original question. The, the well, rational position is the agnostic. To, I mean, the rational position is the agnostic position. Why up there? Anyways, the problem here is he says that's an anti-scientific belief. And if you know anything at all, if you have taken a single course on the philosophy of science, you know that that statement is very problematic. Science has limitations. Look at his mockery. He says, why up there? He asks this question. What, I mean, the know. rational position, I, I didn't say up there. I didn't pick a place. Okay, you well, picked why, a place. why would a winged um, horse be the, be the way to get to heaven if uh, it's not up there? I, I, asked, I, asked, I asked a question about, you asked about proof. I'm all for saying I can't prove it, but can you prove he didn't do it? <laughs> I mean, this is, Can this is I the prove end old he debate. Didn't fly to heaven this is the end. I'm just asking on your criteria. I'm just asking on no, your I criteria. No, I can't prove it, and I can't prove it wasn't a golden unicorn. But I'm or fascinated that you'd rather. I'm fascinated that you'd rather talk about uh, what animals the prophet may or may not have used 1,400 years ago, rather than talk about what Muslims or Islam is doing in the world today, good or bad. Well, uh, that uh, seems to be the discussion. Okay, so this is this is the gist of it. Here's the response. Here, here's what we we want to point out and break down. First of all, uh, the mockery. Uh, th this uh, unfortunately betrays uh, an intention, betrays a perspective. Uh, this is not an intellectual way to uh, analyze and assess an argument. The second is when he claimed that to believe in a miracle, regardless of what the miracle is, that it is anti-scientific. This is uh, very problematic. First of all, science has limitations. It's not anti-scientific. It's beyond the realm of what science can explore and discover and observe because it is metaphysical, because it is based on other branches of knowledge. And so if you take a basic philosophy of science course, you understand what, what is science and what is beyond the realm of science. Now, many people, and it's very, very common, uh, unfortunately, in the publications of many atheists who attack religion, they take science beyond the realm of science and add to it philosophical baggage, philosophical interpretation that oftentimes the science is not saying, or they will use science, this one tool of discovery, this one tool that we Muslims believe is extremely important and that God gave us the faculties uh, to be able to explore through. They want to use the tool of science for everything, that there's no other tool of knowledge. So this is a problem of philosophy, not a problem of science itself. Science is a tool and it's extremely useful and Muslims have advanced many of the sciences and we continue to. But you take a step back and ask what, what else is possibly true? What other knowledge can you have about the world that science cannot uh, possibly know or science cannot uh, comment on or cannot observe that it is not empirical? And so the mockery here is very problematic. The, the sense of confidence, this is anti, this is not anti-scientific. In fact, this is beyond the realm of science. This is a very basic philosophical uh, principle. This is beyond the realm of science. Now we are talking about philosophy. We're talking about uh, the proofs that extend beyond the empirical. Now, you, you may not be following along and wondering, well, what is the, the proper response? Uh, the first point, again, uh, this is beyond the realm of science. The second is the mockery is not needed when you uh, analyze and assess 
an argument. The third is the mistake that Mahdi Hassan made, which is to say, I can't prove it or that the default position is uh, is agnostic or uh, can you prove it didn't happen? That's very problematic because if you're saying prove it didn't happen, I can come up with any claim uh, like Richard Dawkins uh, gave this example. Uh, why not? Uh, what if you claimed it was a unicorn? What if you claimed it was you know something else? So how do you know? How do I disprove something like this? You're the one who believes in it. So they are claiming in this case, the burden of proof is on you that a miracle took place, but that it is according to Richard Dawkins, that it is and anti-scientific. Now, you are supposed to actually respond and say, first, this is beyond the realm of science. Second, I can prove that something like this took place, but the proof itself needs to be analyzed, meaning what? It's not proof on just one uh, term. It's not proof only according to the empirical. What other types of proofs exist in the world for you to know something is true? There is rationalism and there is testimony. You believe in many things that happen and many peer-reviewed studies and these peer-reviewed studies, if you believe they are coming from a credible, authentic, trustworthy uh, outlet or uh, publication or a university, you tend to have a, a strong belief. Maybe there's a high likelihood that something did take place, a study that is coming from an honest person, a person of integrity, uh, a university that has very rigorous standards and it has to be reviewed by so many people and so on and so forth. Well, that's called testimony. You believe in certain things, you have knowledge, of certain things based on testimony. So rationalism and testimony are two branches of knowledge. And these extend beyond the empirical. Empiricism or science here, a sense experience is another. So Richard Dawkins, like many other new atheists, unfortunately, they've removed any kind of intellectual humility when it comes to using philosophy appropriately. And he mocks the, the notion, the concept of a miracle that someone believes in with a rational proof and justification. So you believe in the Quran with a proof for why the Quran is true. That's beyond the realm of what I have to discuss now. But you have a rational justification. The Quran is miraculous. So I believe in God and I can prove that this message is from God. It's not man-made. And I believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I can prove he is truly a prophet of God for many reasons. And there are very powerful rational arguments. And so the conclusion is the information within is true. Now, that information will include things that we can experience and things we cannot experience. And it, 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 unfortunately, it's a type of pride, a type of arrogance to claim that you have access to all of the things that are happening in the universe or all of the things happening behind the scenes or that you can comment on things like miracles. Why? The reason he mocked miracles is because uh, it contradicts what normally happens in nature. So the idea of an animal that Prophet Muhammad rode on in this miracle where he ascended in the night journey, Al-Isra wal miraj he ascended to the heavens. There is a rational justification for this. But yes, of course, this violates the laws of nature. And it is not an odd thing from a philosophical perspective. Why? Because although it is not the norm for there to be a winged animal that travels very quickly with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, like other prophets and the miracles given to them, the God who created the universe and the laws of nature can change those laws of nature. He is all powerful. So he created laws that allow the, the universe and nature to operate in a specific way. And he's able to change these laws for a specific reason, like a an event, an incident, uh, a wisdom, uh, something that had to happen with a previous prophet or messenger. And so you use the laws of nature to discover, to survive, to explore the natural world that God created. And that same creator has the power to change the laws of nature. It is a violation of laws of nature from our perspective, a change that we cannot, uh, in fact, replicate. And that's a proof that's, in fact, one component of what a miracle is in Islamic theology. There's a purpose behind it. So it is not anti-scientific, first of all. It is beyond the realm of science. This is a mistake. Second of all, there is a rational proof, a rational justification for it. And it is that the source of information is true. It is that the uh, empirical uh, facets of the Quran's miraculous nature can be studied. Uh, so this is this is all following from another source of information. This is all following a logical sequence here. And so it is it is a type of uh, mockery to be very condescending and to insult uh, not just the journalist Mahdi Hassan, but to talk about it in a very condescending way as though this is what science actually says, as though this is the rational position. Uh, unfortunately, th this uh, demonstrates that there's a lot of pride there's a type of superiority complex 
for anyone who does not rely on only one tool, and that is the tool of science, and also misunderstands the realm and the scope of that tool and what is beyond it, what is philosophy of science. And this is a very common mistake we see, and many scientists have pointed out in the books of and the literature of many new atheists, unfortunately, and it has misguided and hurt and harmed a lot of people in the pursuit of what is true, in the pursuit of what is good in society. And so many people become upset, many people become uh, emotional, many people might become uh, sensitive or angry, uh, with these topics. At the end of the day, uh, let's focus on the argument itself. The claims of Richard Dawkins here are proven false. Now, I do believe that Mahdi Hassan could have had a stronger response, but he was perhaps trying to bring the conversation back to uh, the main topic. And also, uh, this is a matter of philosophy and philosophy of science. It extended a little bit beyond uh, maybe uh, what was prepared for in uh, the topic of religion being good or evil. So this is all a distraction uh, in a way that Richard Dawkins keeps focusing on, although he claims that that is not what he's concerned with. He's concerned with truth. So truth will require some understanding of philosophy of science and not just exaggerating what science is. Let's take the tools of knowledge and apply them appropriately and correctly so that we are not deceiving ourselves and other people.